Hello, I'm David Stishon and I'm a student in History 711, the development of Western freedoms at Liberty University. I'd like to introduce you to the relevance of Western civilization. We live in what is referred to as the Western world and enjoy the blessings of Western civilization. What does that mean and how did we get here? While the title Western Civilization is fairly recent, the term is used to describe a set of principles, born of faith and ideas guaranteeing individual rights. The English-speaking people and their Judeo-Christian cohorts and nations around the world have had a dominant impact on individual rights, philosophy, and technological advantages. Over the years, they've shared those ideas with the others who inhabit the planet. The West is not nearly a place, it's a set of ideas. The laboratory was the British Isles, conquered successively by waves of Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Northmen, and Normans over a thousand years, England absorbed the people of each of these invasions as immigrants and appropriated their ideas and technology into a vibrant culture. The concept of individual rights, representative government, the rule of law, and for a while a stable faith and growing nation-state allowed England to absorb most of the inhabitants of the surrounding islands. Great Britain then evolved into a hybrid of a strong monarchy limited by a representative parliament that could limit powers or replace the ruler if required. With a common law that protected businesses as well as individuals, the guarantee of contracts grew from the mere pursuit of trade and mercantilism into capitalism. Entrepreneurial efforts and free trade created great wealth among a non-hereditary class as technological advantages benefited the creators of enterprises not merely the ruler or the state. Distilled learning from the ancient Mediterranean past, particularly the philosophy and letters of the Greeks, was almost completely lost to scholars for almost 2,000 years. It was not passed down as golden nuggets through successive generations, as Kwame Anthony Apaya rightly states. Rather, it was recovered from sterile storage in Baghdad and other places as dormant seeds that flourished in the heavy, wet soils of the north where the cultural ground was fertile and well prepared for it. In the Isles of Great Britain and nearby kindred fields, the Greek notions of individual liberty were grafted upon the Roman rule of law and bureaucracy, the German whiten of equal representation and elected leaders, and the faith and fairness of the Latin Christian Church. These concepts informed the philosophers of the Enlightenment and inspired revolutions in government and society. The West was for a limited time a unique place, the British Isles. Then after periods of discovery, trade, and colonization, it expanded across the oceans and dominated the world as the British Empire, where it donated a significant population and created nations. When it freed its colonies in the past 100 years, it left a legacy of principles, if not language. As citizens of the United States, we are included in the broad footprint of the West. We are not subjects. We are citizens of a nation of great natural resources. But as inhabitants of the United States, as Daniel Hannon reminds us, the greatest legacy we enjoy is freedom and liberty. For the past generation, Western civilization is under attack from within. While the advances in arts and technology it nurtures continue to thrive, universal basic freedoms and liberties are under siege. Statists and others see the principles of freedom and liberty as a zero-sum game in which some individuals and groups must lose rights in order to give more power to others. Crony capitalism is threatening free markets and entrepreneurs. Alexander Rosenthal Pubel states that so-called progressives, quote, in the name of realizing a good that will make human beings truly free, coercion may be employed by those who feel they have greater insight into the good against those they regard as ignorant." Unquote. This is part of a mighty struggle over concepts that make Western civilization unique and great. As Robert Royal states, quote, "...civilization is not something we inherit or ever finally possess. Each generation, individually and collectively, needs to make a continual effort to appropriate it anew, because a civilization is not passed along to us at birth." Unquote. It is important as historians that we study to understand and profess to others the importance of learning from the past mistakes of Western civilization. At the same time, we are reminded to partake of its gifts. I want to thank each of you, my colleagues, for joining me as I present my thoughts. I look forward to sharing our journey as we learn from each other.